went to college thinking that I wasn't going to pursue photography, but I started, I went to Harvard and I studied social studies and as I was getting into sociology and anthropology and economics, I started to take photography on the side and I realized that some of these, even the social theories were coming out in more powerful ways for me in my photography and so I tried to combine sociology and photography and I wasn't able to do it at school um, but I did end up doing it in life. Girl Culture was a five-year project where I photographed from little girls to grown women all over the country looking at how the body has become the primary expression of identity for girls and women and also the strain of exhibitionism that carries through modern femininity. I think a big part of that is what we take in from the media influence, a, a, a culture that prizes image, that prizes um, women's bodies, and that has this ideal of perfection. And I think that's something that girls and women of all ages kind of struggle against. And I think in our time, the body has become a measure of self um, and a measure of, of kind of goodness and perfection. You know, I think that the way to look at the subjects in the book is more um, like they, we all have them in us rather than they're in these particularly exotic situations. I mean, I try to pick moments and pick subjects that to me really reveal the culture. So for me, the barometer is more what do we take from their stories. And I think that when girls and women read their words on the walls and look at the pictures, people identify with different um, subjects and think about how they act in different situations and how there are parts of these women in them. And sometimes I think that takes a very unusual form. I remember speaking to a very educated, very evolved curator of photography at a major museum and she seemed kind of my idea of um, powerful, feminist, kind of intellectual. And she looked at this picture that's in the book of a stripper's supplies. And you see the stripper's things, her makeup and her money and her, um, I think there's like a Twinkie or something in the picture. And she said, this is my life. And I said, what? You know, how could you identify with this picture? And she said, that's the mask that I put on every morning, that makeup. Well, I think that the thing to keep in mind when you look at the show is it's not, a balanced view of life. It's not a balanced view of any of these characters in the pictures. It's really me distilling a moment in their life that speaks to the culture that I think we can all identify with. Not that we all spend 100% of our life obsessing about how we look, but that we've all experienced those moments and those moments which can be very disempowering. And for some people, you know, there, there may be very extreme or pathological reactions. I think there were probably two situations that were the most difficult. One was being in the eating disorder clinic, and I think that was part of why I went back to make my next book and my first movie, which was called Thin, which all takes place in this eating disorder clinic in Florida. But the girl, Erin, who's in girl culture, was um, at the clinic at the time, and her story was so sad and so extreme. And in the picture, she's standing on the scale backwards because she can't stand to see the weight gain she's enduring in treatment. And she was also a cutter, and she said that she, she there's a picture that has about, uh, shows her belly and like there are about 50 cuts on her belly. And she said that she realized she cut herself there because that represented being a woman and her uterus and the pain of being a woman. And so she said she didn't mind hurting herself there because it was just like bringing the scars to the outside. And the other, the other part that was hard in a different way was being on spring break. The spring break, in a way it's so normal, it's something you know everyone sees, many students experience it, many people see it on Girls Gone Wild, but it's also deeply disturbing. And I think one of the pictures that I made there, um, which is in the show, is probably the most disturbing um, image in the show. And at the time I was pregnant and I was pregnant with a boy and so in some ways I, I just was so far from that experience unlike many of the other situations where I could deeply identify with the subjects and on the other hand I was just hoping that my son was never going to go on spring break and be you know what looked like one of these perpetrators. I think that doing the work is my own therapy you know my husband always says you know 
we always joke about how if I actually did therapy, I might not be able to do the work anymore. I really, I feel like I process a lot of things through my work. And when I did, um, there, there was no situation in this project that was, that was to that extent. But when I did Thin, it was a very intense experience. And myself and the crew, when we were making the movie, were practically living in this eating disorder clinic for a six month period. And then I continued on at the clinic and with the women for another year and a half. And um, I never felt like I needed therapy, but I think it did push all of us on the crew to kind of examine our own issues. And also, um, at times, we needed to take a break from it because it was such an intense experience. But I, I mean, the bottom line is I really love what I do, and I love getting to know the women, and I loved, um, I felt really honored to have their trust. There were a lot of surprises all along. I mean, I think one of the most surprising quotes is from a girl named Mary Katie from the South who says, I would rather be dumb than be a slut, but I would rather be a slut than be fat and ugly. So that's the hierarchy of values. Yeah, I think the thing about uncovering reality is that, um, you know, you won't believe it if it was fiction in a lot of the cases. And um, nothing is what you expect. Nothing is, nothing is as simple as you might expect it. Like this, this woman, Mary Katie, that I just talked about, is a southern girl um, at a very fancy finishing school who is very confident of her values, her very traditional values, and in some ways seems to really have her head on straight in a way that a lot of the other girls don't. And yet, as we talked further, it turned out she revealed that she was anorexic, that she was an exercise addict. There were all of these contradictions and ambivalences in her, in her story that were unknowable from first blush, and that's why I really like using the counterpart of the interviews with the images, because the images tend to be shiny and glossy, and I use a lot of very saturated colors and kind of language of the popular culture, and yet the interviews sometimes um, really take us beneath that surface to understand the more complicated and, psycho and psychological dynamics of what's going on. I'm so excited about the show at the Topeka Library. I love the installation and I'm particularly excited by the room that they made about um, postcard projects and telling secrets and how they kind of created their own interactive um, exhibit for people in the community to participate with. And the thing I'm most thrilled about is, well, there, there are many things, but to have the show in a library is very important to me. It's almost all of the other venues have been museum museum exhibitions and it's wonderful to be in a museum but it's really this is really where the rubber meets the road for me to be in a community space where people can wander in maybe not expecting what they're going to see and be introduced to this work and be introduced to photography and um, the ideas in this work and I think for the library and the junior league to be using this show as a way as a catalyst for discussion about these issues with the community is is really important and is really the the kind of highest goal I have for how the work can function. I hope that it provokes questions. I hope that it provokes conversation. Um, there are no answers here. There are no um, I don't have um, any prescriptions for um, kind of where we're going in terms of the life of girls and, and how to address the self-esteem crisis, but I think there's power in deconstructing the world around us and power in understanding it and questioning it and not taking things at face value. And I hope that this show provokes conversations between girls, between girls and boys, between girls and their parents.